anticipation. For the Cavaliers, a chance for payback after last season's last-second heartbreaking loss to Texas. Hi, everybody. Ron Franklin. Welcome once again to Saturday Primetime here on ESPN. 1995, Austin, Texas. Phil Dawson with no time left on the clock. Kicks a 50-yard field goal. Texas wins over Virginia 17-16. It was the first time in 101 years of Texas football that a game had been decided on the last play of the game. But one week ago down in Austin, Notre Dame pull that same trick they win 27 24 this time Texas on the losing end and the question is can they rebound from that heartbreaking loss as far as Virginia is concerned they have been spurned on and the student body has not forgotten last year's dramatics in fact this game has been sold out since May The drama of last year's game only has heightened the anticipation. We'll be back after this. Number 13 against number 19 here in Charlottesville tonight. Mike Godfrey joins me as usual on the telecast. And Mike, as we always do at this time, let's talk about our Saturday night primetime players and Ron we've got a bunch of primetime players in this ball game tonight led by a couple outstanding running backs Ricky Williams running back for Texas a strong back and he's got great hands catching the football out of the backfield he's a bull and he loves to make yards after the contact on the other side of the field Tiki Barber a mirror image of Ricky Williams for Virginia another outstanding running back that will take a punishment needs a little crack and has great acceleration and tonight Ron I would expect both defenses with this weather to kind of gang up on the two running backs and a lot of pressure will shift to, to uh, Tim Sherman the Virginia quarterback because he's going to face eight and nine man fronts all night well the weatherman is not a popular guy here tonight 66 degrees I mean wet Kellen Winslow down on the sideline Kellen what exactly is it like down there well, to say it's wet is an understatement. Ryan and Mike, a few minutes ago, it was a light drizzle, which has turned into a torrential downpour. But this game is designed to handle just that. Prescription turf, drainage underneath, it will soak the ball, it will soak the water down and away. If, if this field, this weather has an advantage to one running back over the other, I would say Ricky Williams, because he's a heavier back, he gets a better traction. But just a side note, this field is flat. My old coach in San Diego, Don Coriel, used to come out before the game and say, oh, Kellen, it's a flat field. It's a flat field. It's great for what we want to do. We should have a good one tonight. Okay, Kellen, stay as dry as you can. We'll hear from you from time to time as the Texas Longhorns won the toss and they have deferred to the second half. And it looks like Chris Stockton, the true freshman out of Katie Taylor, will kick it off. We're underway to the far side of the field. And this is going to be taken by Wilkins. Tries to bring it back to the middle, short of the 15-yard line. And let's take a look at the starters, first of all, for Virginia. Tim Sherman, quarterback, has been a little bit of a question mark for the Cavaliers tonight. But he's got two good ones behind him in Medley and Tiki Barber. The wide receivers need somebody to step up big here. Jermaine Crowell, healthy again, had a toe a week ago. Brian Owen and Walt Derry are the receivers. Up front. Karzuski, Rayley, Lachlan, Britton, and Williams. Rayley and Lachlan, the only two veterans. Everybody else is new on that offensive front. Sherman going to throw on first down. Lofts it. Got it complete. Number 17 is Crowell, just who we were talking about. And George Welch comes out and crosses up Texas on the very first play as Allen makes the tackle, but it's a gain of 31 yards. Ron, then Virginia's a running football team and should be facing eight people in the box tonight, and the pressure falls to Tim Sherman, the quarterback. That's a nice play by Tom O'Brien, Joe Kreback coming out of the shoot, throwing that football against his Texas defense. So Virginia serves notice on the first play. We'll do whatever tonight in this weather. Barber, first time, has five, six, now seven yards as he is into Texas territory. And let's take a look at those Texas defenders. The down three, Mosier, Chris Atkins, 
really a strong and versatile guy in the middle. Clarence Martin, the other defensive end. The linebackers, here's the biggest question mark for the Horns. Kirkpatrick, Richardson, and Tyson King. They may have found a young star in Aaron Humphrey, but the secondary probably as good as any in the nation. Allen, Carter, Thomas, and Bryant Westbrook. Barber in motion as they roll the pocket. They throw it complete, and Trey Thomas is there to make the tackle on Crowell. Ron, Tim Sherman last year played in a couple of pressure situations. He was 8 for 10 coming into the Virginia Tech game and threw two touchdown passes. Also played against Michigan and was 3 out of 5. So he's been in these kind of games, but not as the central figure. He replaced Mike Grohl last year, so he needs to come up big tonight for Virginia. It is a first down. The line of scrimmage, the Texas 42. Barber. And this time he's going to only have about one on the play is Tyson King, a senior out of El Campo, comes up to make the hit on him. And Ron, you can tell right from the start, Virginia's fired up there. We talked to the players last night in the hotel. They've been waiting a whole year for this ball game. It's, it's kind of a payback game for them, but uh, they've got a lot of respect for this Texas football team. Well, thank goodness the rain has slowed a little bit. It's down to a drizzle, but it was very heavy. 10 minutes ago. Barber right up the middle and you see he is gobbled up by Chris Atkins. The big junior out of Paris, Texas. 6'1", 292 pounds. Now for Tiki Barber leading the ACC in rushing. 127 yards per ball game. And he's leading a couple pretty good running backs there. Leon Johnson and Ward Dunn who played in the rain uh, storm uh, down there in Tallahassee today. Third down, the line to make the 32. Fumbled snap, passes away, and he is off the mark. So George Welch's ball club comes out. They throw a 31-yard completion. And, Mike, I think they got to go uh, punt here, don't they? Yes, they do. You, you see the effect of the weather. Kellen talked about the wet surface, and then there was a bad snap on that play. Tim Sherman never got the football. Didn't really have a chance to throw that pass. Mike, this is one of the best punters in the country in Will Bryce. Now, here he can't really utilize his good hang time, but he's awfully good at kicking, as you can see, inside the 20. The left footer, very, very high. And into the end zone. Just missed nailing that one at the one. It's a 39-yard punt. So there's a timeout on the field with 12-15 left to play in this opening quarter. When we come back, Texas on offense. When he's standing by. Ron, we'll go back to you now in Charlottesville. All righty, thanks, Mike. First down for Texas at the 20, and Brown going to throw on first down. Good protection, wings it. Got it complete to his favorite receiver, Michael Adams, who comes out to the 40-yard line, and it's going to be a gain of 20. James Brown. Sean Mitchell and Ricky Williams a very powerful lot there Curtis Jackson Mike Adams who just caught the pass and Pat Fitzgerald the tight end he will see a lot of action and up front of the offensive line Octavius Bishop has the biggest task tonight because he's got Ashman Ben Adams Feeberger Dan Neal the All-American at right guard and Jay Humphrey is the right tackle running play Sean Mitchell Having to backtrack, and there is the quickness of that defense as Rondé Barber comes up and takes his feet out from under him. This is an excellent, maybe the best defense that George Welch has ever had. Certainly the front seven. Harris, Dingle, White, and Ashman. Ashman probably the bell cow up there. The linebackers, extremely quick. Ferrier, Rayner in the middle, and Jamie Sharper. And in the secondary, this is the way they line up. Barber, who you just saw making the tackle, along with Poindexter, Phelan, and Joe Rowe. And, of course, he is the twin brother of running back Tiki Barber. That was a loss of six. Virginia shows blitz. They bring the couple. Brown is going to go long, and he throws this one up for grabs, and it is intercepted by Poindexter. Dexter. 
And if you want to know how, now that one was thrown up for grabs, but if you want to know how good this Virginia defense is, Mike, that is 33 games in a row that they have had an intercepted pass. Yeah, and Ron, James Brown made a mistake, but it's like a punt. You, know, you want to throw one up, you want to throw it up like he just did there, get it picked off. It's just like a punt. But uh, John Makovic said something interesting the other day at practice. He said, I can't get involved in a close game here and play it tight to the best. I know it's going to take a different type of attitude, and he knows what he's in for in this golf ball game with this crowd. Sherman with a play action. He's going to throw on first down again. Great protection. Gets it across the middle. That's Barber. Gets one block, and he is just short. In fact, they'll say he is not short. He's at the 45, and that was Crowell, number 17, with an excellent block for a 16-yard game. Well, you're right, Ron. Crowell really laid a good block for Tiki Barber to pick up about five more yards. We talked about Tiki Barber. He's not just a good running back out of the backfield and acceleration and the speed, but he also catches the football, which good backs have to do in this day and age. Chris Carter finally bumped him out of bounds at the 45. So Virginia coming out showing that uh, they have a variety of things that they will show tonight, but they've been very good in the pass early. Here's Barber. As the flag comes down, back into the boundary, and he'll be knocked out of bounds there for a yard loss. See Tyson King outside along with Gray Mosier. You know, let's check the marker. Texas lined up offside. Michael Dover, our referee tonight. It is an ACC crew. In fact, the same crew that we had with Syracuse, Mike, for the North Carolina game. Ron, Tim Sherman has really come out in this ball game and opened up this ball game. And really, he's a fifth-year senior. This is his chance right now. Maybe struggled a little bit in the first three ball games, but George Welsh has a lot of confidence in the fifth-year senior, and I like the way they're calling plays tonight. They're putting the game in his hands here early. Showing confidence in him, and he has responded. First and five. They fake the counter. Sherman with the pass, and this one is going to be knocked away. That's a nice job by Bryant Westbrook. Well, with the Padres win earlier today, there is one game tomorrow affecting the Major League Baseball playoffs, and we'll have it for you. The ESPN will bring you the Padres against the Dodgers at 4 Eastern. They'll play for the Western Division Championship and also the wild card spot. ESPN also will start the divisional playoffs on Tuesday, 1 o'clock Eastern, Cleveland in Baltimore, followed by the National League Divisional Playoff game at 4. Second down and five. Barber, oh, does he get hit by Atkins right at the line of scrimmage. Chris is a powerlifting champion. The strongest guy on this Texas football team. And Mike, when he goes unblocked, it, that's a tough matchup. Well, he's six foot two, 295. And you're right, he benches 560 pounds, but runs a 4940. And he'll draw a lot of double teams from the opponents because they know how strong and quick he is in the middle. Tom Lachlan is uh, not going to be blocking him one-on-one -on -one all night. Mike's exactly right. Third down, and they need the Texas 45. Pitch goes to Barber. Got a blocker in front, and very close, in fact, with a second effort, I think he's got the first down. Tyson King defensively for Texas. Nice design on this play. Looks like a shotgun play where you get motion on the outside and get two crack back blocks by the wide receivers, and all of a sudden you get the ball to your best back and you get him outside that contain. Chris Carter standing by to look at the measurement, and as they stretch it out by half the length of the football, it is a Virginia first down. If you've just turned us on, Ron Franklin, along with Mike Godfrey and Kellen Winslow at a very wet and rainy Charlottesville, Virginia. Our score is 0-0. Second offensive possession for the Virginia Cavaliers as they intercepted a James Brown pass. And we have 9.42 to play in this opening quarter. Sherman again. Play action. Pressure up the middle, gets his pass complete. This one is to Bird, breaks one tackle, goes inside the 30. He's to the 26 as Kyle Richardson finally will stop in. The game plan is simple for Virginia tonight. Get Tim Sherman some confidence early to open up the running game a little later. Tim Sherman, whose, whose dad is one of the Virginia coaches. 
Wide receivers coaches. Good fake right here, and then good throw to Derek Bird on the outside. Now that's against everything. The flow of the football was going to the left. He was able to throw it back in front of Brian Westbrook. Deepest penetration of the night. They bring the corner. Barber gets the pass, and he is stopped. They're going to say at the 20-yard line. That's what makes Tiki Barber so dangerous so that he catches the football. And George Welsh, the head coach, said he's an excellent running back, and he's even a better receiver and has more speed than Terry Kirby, who played for us a couple years ago. Just needs a little crack, and once he hits that crack and accelerates, he could take it the distance. Mike, something that's been very big for Virginia early on, and that is their play on first down. They've been playing with second and short a lot. Makes it to Medley. Pitch back goes to Barber, and Tyson King out there to force him out of bounds. Now, the spot of the football here, extremely important, and it looks as though they're going to say the 23. 17-yard line. And he is about, I beg your pardon, just shy about a yard and a half, not the 23, but around the 18-yard line. Ron, sometimes when you get a tape in, you'll see a play that works for another team, and you put it in, and you run it. That's the same play that Notre Dame, Ron Paulus, kicked out in that touchdown uh, run that Texas had against them last week against Notre Dame. Third down. They need about a yard and a half here. Now, the tight end, Derry, came out of his stance. And instead of a yard and a half, now it's going to be more like six and a half yards to pick up the first down. Did he give? Did he point? Yeah, he pointed, pointed to the wrong way. direction. The, the crowd's cheering now, and <laughs> the signal again, and uh, it's it's against Virginia. Well, George Walsh has done an outstanding job here at Virginia. Took over for Dick Bestwick, uh, the former head coach, and uh, really has done a nice job with this Virginia program. Was the team that finally beat Florida State last year in that big game we had on Thursday night. And this is the biggest game since then, Mike, right here in Charlottesville. Sherman is 5 of 7 throwing, 77 yards. Gets it out to Barber, and he's got one on one, and he will be stopped just short of the first down. Safe passes for Tim Sherman also. When you can get Tiki Barber outside, and that's exactly what they're trying to do. Once you get his football in his hands, now Chris Carter, number 16, is going to slip. Wet field coming up against a tough running back. He slips and goes by, and then Tiki Barber picks up a couple extra yards. You know, Mike, now from where they have spotted the football, it looked as though initially he was going to be short, but now they're bringing the chains across the way, and this is very close. We can't see because of the folks on the sideline, but as we get a shot from right there, it is a first down Virginia. Tim Sherman and Ron you made a point just a little bit ago he's six out of eight safe throws in first down they've been throwing the football in first down figure in Texas going to jump in there with an eight man front to gang up on Tiki Barber but this and only this can only play well for Tiki Barber later on as we move down this game just under eight minutes to play opening quarter and Barber gets by if they overrun the play and he will score from 16 yards out and medley with the key block Extra point attempt, Rafael Garcia is perfect. And as we take a timeout, look at this. Texas had folks all over the place, and it is like they kind of overran the play. Barber from 16, it's Virginia on top. And we're back as the rain now is coming harder again here in Charlottesville. Five plays, 71 yards. Barber from 16 yards out. The drive consumed 317. 
And of course, that seven points coming off a Texas turnover with James Brown throwing the interception. We'll take another look at the touchdown run following the kickoff. Rafael Garcia. Going to kick it away. And it... Curtis Jackson and Mike Scarborough back in a dual safety. Hard enough to see the football, Mike, let alone to hold on to it. I wouldn't want to be a return guy under these kind of conditions. See a 10 of his 17 kickoffs have been into the end zone this year, so he is very good at the deep kick. Let's see if he can do that under these rainy conditions. Boy, this is a good one. Three yards deep, Scarborough will go to the knee, and Mike, let's take another look at that touchdown. Well, sometimes you want to run where they have the fewest players. You see the center right here. There's four players over here defensively and three over here. And both linebackers are going to overrun this play or slip a little bit on Tiki Barber. Tyson King, 50, has a shot at him. Kyle Richardson, 59, has a shot at him. But again, that little crack, that little acceleration, and he makes that little move and you just on a wet field it's very difficult to tap to make that play but they've got to keep their feet and try to wrap up on tiki barber cut back runner on this kind of field oh he's, be he's in a benefit now ricky williams has to do his part now he's a load with uh snow tires on tonight <laughs> and of course sean mitchell as well right up the middle it's williams he'll take it for a couple and let's check in with mike tarico mike no such precipitation problems for this McDonald's breakaway run. Arizona State, after the win over Nebraska, did they come out flat? Not at all. Jake Plummer, one of his three touchdown passes thus far to J.R. Redmond. ASU by 17. You know, Mike, that sun on, uh, on their logo is shining a little brighter out in Tempe. Arizona State. Ooh. Second down and about eight. Two yards gained by Williams on that running play. Kick out to Curtis Jackson. 35 gets about three or four more yards. And let's see, they're going to spot him out at the 39. As Poindexter finally got to him, that's good for 17 yards. Texas had such a tough loss against Notre Dame. And a couple of players were even saying on Wednesday, students were still asking him about the Notre Dame game. Well, John Makovic came in here yesterday, and he tried to loosen it up. Matter of fact, he ran a quarterback sneak against his defense. And they allowed him to go 70 yards for the touchdown. But anything he could find to try to loosen his team up and get the Notre Dame game off their mind. And this is one guy that, that wants him to stop talking about it because he had the situation where the pass was intercepted and it led to uh, a situation where Texas had been leading by seven with seven minutes to go and then that turnover and everything else is history. You know, he's, and they asked him about it, and he said, you know, I was in the wrong formation, and probably if I had it to do over again, I'd call it timeout. But tough thing about playing and coaching, you only have 25 seconds to make those decisions. He tried to make a play. Unfortunately, the ball went up in the air and was picked off. Yep. But he's won a lot of games as the Texas quarterback. Mike, it looked like the chain came off the chain unit over there. <laughs> That's the reason for the stoppage in play. Threw a chain early. <laughs> Virginia on top, 7-0. Texas, second offensive possession. Sean Mitchell almost came squirting out the back of the pile. And that's going to be a gain of almost six as Big John Harris, who was 6'8", 270, out of Elwood, Pennsylvania, puts the stop on Mitchell. And I thought Michael Adams had a good comment when he talked about this ball game. He said, you know, it's good that we're coming up here in a hostile environment to play this game. That's probably what we need coming off that Notre Dame game. Dan Neal also had a had a good thought about it. He said, you know, this is, we've got a lot of veterans on this team. And he said, we have not dwelled on last week. So you'll see that on Saturday. Well, they fake the counter play. Sets deep in the pocket. Goes on top, and he's got Michael Adams there. And intercepted. That's Barber. Took it away from Adams. And he will be tackled at the 47-yard line by Feebigger. 
Ron, they had it. They just waited too long. James Brown waited too long to throw this football. They got behind Stephen Phelan, number 49, the safety. He was beat. James Brown just waited too long. And when you wait too long to make that throw, usually it's going to be intercepted. Here's Mike Adams, number 83. Now, you're going to see him on a post route. You're going to see him run right by the safety. Now, there's the safety, 49, Phelan. But the ball takes too long to get there. And then Barber with the interception. Mike. He had it, and, and when he Just got hit from behind, him. look at the ball. It comes that Barber is the recipient of a present second interception, and Virginia has the ball at the 47. Sherman, he's going to go on top. He's got Crowell there, and tipped and intercepted by Texas, and now here comes a flag down as Allen made the interception, and it was Carter who had the ball hit him in the back, I believe. Let's see if they're going to call face guarding. Let's see if let's see what uh, there it is. There's the call. It's on Chris Carter. Didn't play the football and just ran into Jermaine Kroll, number 17. Well, Crowell was coming back for the ball, but Mike, this year, as long as you're showing that you're playing the football, that it's not face masking. No, but I, I don't think they, they, I don't think the call was that he wasn't playing the football at all. John Makovic trying to get this train to slow down a little bit. Things have gotten off a little too quickly for him. The situation at on the first interception by Texas. As James Brown just threw it up for grabs. That last one, Adams had it. He got had hit. And, well, he had the ball. Right. It got hit from behind. It popped out, and Barber was in the right spot at the right time. Complete to Kirby. And Kirby close to the first down. In fact, he will have it at the 26-yard line, and Allen will knock him out of bounds. You can walk into some stadiums and watch the play calling of the coaches and just... Everything is going just like you planned it in practice. And that's what's happening to Virginia tonight. They've got rhythm going. They're throwing on first down. They're picking up big chunks of yardage. Tiki Barber sneaking through on the run. And Tim Sherman has a load of confidence tonight as a quarterback. Jonathan Hickerson, number 43, a senior out of San Antonio, and at linebacker. As Barber makes a tackle, comes back up the middle behind the block, inside the 10, and he will score. There is Rondé who had the interception, and there is Tiki who just scored the touchdown right now. But it's the, the Barbers of Seville show. And they've got a couple of Barbers cutting hair here tonight, and they are really playing well. And that, that was impressive by Tiki Barber, the cutting ability on a wet surface. Garcia with the extra point attempt, and he's good. Timeout on the field, 5-16 left of the opening quarter. As Tiki Barber spins and twists and turns, Virginia 14 to nothing. Watch out. This is as rough and tough. And Virginia has stormed on top, and this homecoming night has started out just exactly the way this guy and his teammates had hoped it would. Showing a lot of confidence booking Texas as a homecoming game. <laughs> yeah, they, you're right, Mike. They haven't been too many folks oh, homecoming games. The only homecoming they usually play in front of is their own. Again, it's going to be Curtis Jackson, number 39, along with Scarborough back deep as John Makovic reads over his playlist on the far side. They've had a couple of nice plays. They just have had the two interceptions that have, have stopped their drive and given the ball to Virginia, and they were able to take advantage of both those turnovers. Sign of a good defense. You give them the football, and they put 14 points on the board. That's right. Both coming off turnovers. And Garcia, you could see him trying to get that turf planted down firmly and make sure that he does not slide with his plant foot. This is going to be Scarborough on the goal line. 
Scarborough had two people to beat and is finally tripped up at the 30 by McIver. Well, as I mentioned, so far tonight, it's been the Barbers of Seville. See, he's got the football, and it's knocked away. Rondi Barber comes away with it. And here is his brother scoring, following a 38-yard return by Ronda. And the second touchdown for Tiki Barber tonight, and the Cavaliers lead 14 to nothing. Ronnie showed great balance on that run. Spin move, tried to get his hand down to keep the balance. Good balance. Brown rolls the pocket, going to hold on to it, and he will get knocked out of bounds around the 35. It's Ferrier, who was outside. Also, Rayner coming in. Difference in this game so far with 5.02 to go in the first quarter is Virginia's play calling has set up their run, and now Texas needs to find a way to get Ricky Williams involved in the offense running the football. Quick count this time. Sean Mitchell tries to cut back against the grain. 49, Stephen Phelan is there. And let's go down to Kellen Winslow. Kellen? Well, Ron and Mike, we have the mother of these great players from Virginia. Mrs. Barber, what do you think about tonight's game? Uh, it's wonderful. I haven't taken a breath since I got here tonight. First, Tiki starts out, and then Rondé kicks in, and then Tiki again. And I'm just a little bit excited. <laughs> All right, gentlemen, back upstairs. A very proud mother. And she has a right to be, right, Ron? Yeah, the Barber twins have uh, gotten off to a very good start. I know John Makovic would attest to that. Third down, they need the 40-yard line to keep this drive going, and right across the middle has it complete. The ball is loose, and they got to say he was down. Yes. Yeah. Matt Davis took a heck of a hit. Mike Tirico, let's check in with you while uh, we've got the momentary timeout. Well, as they look at one Davis on the field, Ron, here's the Davis of this day, Troy Davis of Iowa State. If you didn't catch it, folks, against Missouri, touchdown runs of 1, 30, 38, and 40 yards. He shatters his own record of 302 yards rushing with 378. Broke the school record and the third best day in rushing yards in major college football history. Matt Davis hobbling off the field. It looks like a, uh, well, don't speculate. Favoring either his left leg or his hip. So it is a first down, Texas. Intercepted as Fitzgerald, the intended receiver, Sharper, one of the first men there on the coverage. Well, James Brown's the type of quarterback. He can get you right back in this game down 14 to nothing. Rick Lance, the defensive coordinator, said he reminds him of a three-point guard. If he gets hot, you know, he can hurt you. And, and James Brown is, Ron, you've watched a lot of Texas football. I mean, he's been the quarterback that's won a ton of football games for these Longhorns. 15-3-1 and one as a starter. Right now, either I'm happy with or not understanding the call that had come in, so Texas calls a timeout. We'll be right back. Charlottesville, but it's, uh, it's not as heavy as it was. But uh, what's really been pouring is the Virginia offense as they're up 14 to nothing in this opening quarter. Two interceptions of uh, James Brown and Tiki Barber has taken both in for touchdowns at the end of those drives. Some movement in the Texas offensive line. Yeah. 
Procedure against Texas. It'll be second and 15. Mike, you've been through this kind of situation. If you're John Makovic and his staff on the sideline, what do you do offensively, and what do you do to settle down your ball club? Unfortunately, I have been. Uh, but <laughs> but what you want to do right now is just stay with your game plan because you've got a back like Ricky Williams. You've got Michael Adams as a wide receiver. Just stay with your game plan, settle your team down, and get that thing of Notre Dame out of here, and you still make this a football game and win it. Virginia shows blitz. Williams goes up the middle, and he gets wrapped up by the ankles. Looked like Ashman. It gets off the bottom of the stack. The senior out of Silver Spring, Maryland. And he's impressive. We talked to him, Ron, last night in the hotel. And John Makovic thinks he's the best defensive lineman on this Virginia defense. And the coaches of Texas think this Virginia defense is better than Notre Dame's defense. Ashman is the leader. Five tackles for loss and three sacks this year. Texas needs to take it to the Virginia 42. Blitz again. Brown going to be sacked by Ferrier. Ball is fumbled, but they say it is dead. No, nope, they're going to give it to Virginia. They're going to give it to Virginia, but no advance of the football. So three Texas turnovers and a loss of 11 on this play. Ron, this blitz, James Brown saw the blitz. He knew that 42 James Ferrier was coming, but his eyes went to the receiver. He never saw Ferrier get the hit on him. He got to throw the ball a little sooner. Poor pass protection by the right side of the offensive line and big play by Ferrier. Now, this Virginia defense is entirely different than what we've seen in the past out of them. A little bit more blitz and a lot, lot more man coverage. Karzuski, <laughs> the tackle was not on the field. He bought a ticket. He was going to watch the game for a while. <laughs> Let's check in with Kellen down on the sideline. Kellen? Well, Ron and Mike, we've got the injury update on Matt Davis, the wide receiver, number 85, who took a real good hit across the middle. He got his bell wrong, a bloody nose. They think he's going to be able to go back in, but they're checking on him again. And also, on that James Brown, if I can make one comment on that, Texas quarterback takes such a deep drop that I think on that time he dropped back so far that he actually ran into the blitz because he didn't give the guard and the tackle a chance to pick the guy up. He dropped back so far, the rush guy was able to run all the way around him to get to the quarterback. A shorter drop, he has to come through those linemen to get to that quarterback. So in that case, Texas might have hurt themselves. 3.08 to play in his opening quarter. And Gary Darnell, the defensive coordinator, knowing full well he can't give up seven more right here or they are really going to be in a deep hole on the road. And Ron, remember what Virginia's done so well. First down's been a passing down for them, and that really opened up Tiki Barber in the running game. Let's see if they stay with it or they cross them up and get the ball to Tiki. Three wide receivers set. And that's what he's doing, Mike. Five-step drop. Crowell has the reception. It's going to be first down at the 12-yard line as Carter on the cover. See, now Texas has two problems right now. We harp on the fact that the Notre Dame game may have taken a lot out of them, but they look a little flat to me right now. But also, Virginia's pouring the cold to them right now. They're not allowing them to get a breath. Jermaine Kroll, number 17, right in front of Chris Carter. Again, a good first down call. 20 yards in the pass play. Tiki Barber, right up the middle, inside the five, and he will score again, his third touchdown of the night. His last three carries, he scored. And he's got 72 yards on nine carries. Ron, he's done great in this ballgame. I'm telling you, Rod, Tim Sherman's been the difference in this first quarter for this Virginia football team. He's opened it up. Garcia's extra point he is good. And we'll hold it right here with 2.35 left in his opening quarter. 
Well, the running back comparisons that we were prepared to show you in touches tonight, Williams only twice with two yards. Barber 12 times, 101 yards, and three touchdowns for him. Well, it's a little unfair when you look at that comparison because Ricky Williams hasn't had the opportunities yet in this ball game because of the two turnovers, the three turnovers now that James Brown has had. And now you fall back 21 to nothing, but you still got to get the ball in his hands around the football, but they just haven't had the opportunities. The offensive line of Virginia, Tom Lockham, the lock in the center with a very nice block, and then again, missed tackles on Tiki Barber. After he gets the football, watch the contacts. There's one, there's two, there's three, and he just runs through those tackles, and you just can't tackle that poorly against a back like Tiki Barber. Gary Darnell, the defensive coordinator, talking with uh, with his troops on the far side. Ron, you know, we again, we go back to the Notre Dame game. You can talk about getting over a loss. You can keep talking about it, but you have to show that you're over it. And I'm not sure this Texas team is over that tough loss they had against Notre Dame. And when students talk to you all week, Wednesday, you're into Wednesday, your preparation gets killed. John McAvick, obviously not a happy man on the far sideline as Curtis Jackson will take the kickoff from the five. And he's got a lot of running room as a flag comes from downtown Charlottesville. NFL countdown tomorrow as Boomer and the boys start your day off right. Be sure and watch as the Chiefs' Dale Carter shows Dion isn't the only one who can go both ways. Also find out what makes the Carolina Panthers tick. And a look into the Vikings' fourth quarter success tomorrow on NFL Countdown. Well, they called holding against Texas, and the ball is coming back to the 22-yard line. Counter tray. Sean Mitchell runs into his blocker, and he's going to go down after a gain of about four yards. And this is a Virginia defense that came into tonight allowing just 50 yards rushing. They've got a lot of line twists up inside. They get a lot of movement out of their defense. They've got size. And, Ron, they've got a big front four that's very, very active. And when you have a front four, the quality of Virginia's front four, solid defense. Harris, Dingle, White, and Ashman, the four that Mike is talking about. This is Ricky Williams. Turns it up the sideline, has the first down, lost the football, has been picked up by Virginia, and they're going to say he was down. Poindexter picked it up. Barrier is the man who made the hit. Well, John McAvick's been in a lot of ball games. He knows 21 to nothing. It's not over, and he just needs to get his team on track here. This is a pitch out to Ricky Williams. Little Earl, as he's called for Earl Campbell. Same type of style. You see him strong running back. Drop that football. I don't know. A man dropped it on his way down. Good hit by James Ferrier. From the 40, first down, Texas. Deep of the middle, complete to Adams. He takes a hit from Poindexter, but Texas across midfield. Curtis Jackson, I beg your pardon, not Adams, on the reception. Well, Anthony Poindexter just leveled Michael Adams after he made that catch. Poindexter, such an outstanding tailback. Curtis Jackson, I mean, he was a weak side linebacker last year, and the Texas players voted him the all-opponent team as a freshman. That tells you a little bit about him. Watch him make this hit on Curtis Jackson. Good solid tackle. Texas on a quick count. It's Williams right up the middle. Almost broke away from the arms of Jamie Sharper. And it's going to be a gain of about four yards in the play. 
Now they're getting the ball to Ricky Williams. Now they've got good mix in this in this in the play calling on this series. Ricky Williams studied the moves of all the great running backs on the film. Said he liked Earl Campbell's stiff arm. He uses that and he liked the spin move of Barry Sanders. He's pretty impressive back. Sean Mitchell. You see Neal out front blocking. And because of the speed of those linebackers, Rayner runs him out of bounds short of the first down as Barber turned the play out. Might have been best served to stay up inside there. Neal. Yeah, because yeah. he had a, he had Dan Neal out in front of him. And once he bounced it outside, there was no one there. Just extended the uh, tackling by Wally Rayner. On the play, it looks as though the chain got <laughs> got bent. So uh, we're gonna play with nine and a half yards now for a first down. Well, the chain's the same length. That's the most important thing. If they're worried about aesthetics, just go ahead and play it, guys. <laughs> Somebody get a shorter guy to hold it. <laughs> it's still gonna be ten yards. <laughs> and John Makovic is finding no humor in any of that because right now. He wants his ball club to come alive and keep this drive going. But he's keeping his poise. You know, he coached under Tom Landy, the great coach of the Cowboys. He knows how important it is to keep your poise in this situation. Deep over the middle, incomplete, and boy, boy, boy. That could have been a penalty on Rayner as he leveled the receiver after the ball had gone by. Well, he was really late. And Rick Lance said about him the other day, he's so excitable, he's a middle linebacker, we will not allow him to call our defensive plays because he is so excitable. It's a little late. Like five like, seconds. Like yesterday. So Schultes will punt it away for Texas. Fair catch is called for and is made by Barber at the 10 yard line. It's a 31 yard kick and Virginia will take it over with their worst field position of the night. And Ron Tiki Barber even makes good decisions on the punt game because when you're at the 10 yard line and that ball's kicked to you and you can make that fair catch you make it at the 10 yard line because if that ball hits and it's liable to get inside the five yard line they have two defenders back there they're going to pin you inside the five smart play won't show up tomorrow on the papers but a smart play by tiki barber barber hit behind the line of scrimmage and he will take it for a couple to the 12 and that's the last play of the opening quarter so we'll take a break with our score Virginia 21 Texas nothing as you look at 49 Aaron Humphrey true freshman out of Lubbock Monterey and his defense knows that they got to get their back up and stop this man, Tiki Barber. He has three touchdowns in this ball game already. Sherman with the pass, and that's the first bad play that he really has had tonight. He just overthrew an open Crowell. So the storyline in this one so far, Texas four possessions, three turnovers. Virginia 21 points off those turnovers. And Tiki Barber with 76 yards rushing three touchdowns in fact he has all of Virginia's rushing yardage nobody else has anything Barber again hit in the backfield breaks a tackle this time he will be double teamed as Westbrook one of the first men to come up and put the stick on him also 16 Chris Carter Helping out. Well, Bryant West, Westbrook is not going to miss a tackle. He's a solid hitter out of the second. There made that great hit and 
the Notre Dame game uh, last week came out on the option play but has size and power from that running back from that defensive back position Will Bryce in the punt Mike Laddams is back deep George Welch said that far and away, Will Bryce is the best punter as far as hang time that he's ever had. But this kid not only can kick him long, five seconds is not uh, out of the norm for him, which is a tremendous weapon on special teams. In fact, Virginia thinks that a combination of Garcia and Bryce may be the best, if not as good a kicking combination as there is in the country. And they take a lot of pride in their defense and their special teams, and they've been waiting for their offense to join in the party, and they've, they've been in tonight. Yeah, they've uh, they've already had a couple of dances. They're, they're hearing the music well. Texas needs a big punt return here. You're right, Mike. It just needs something to happen. That last drive, it looked as though that it was going to happen, then... Bogging down. Tough defense to go against the distance. Virginia's defense. Line drive kick, and this one is very returnable. Michael Adams from the 40. Right up the middle, and he gets sandwiched at the 48. That's a 50-yard kick and eight on the return. The National Hockey Night this Friday, Joe Sackett and Patrick Waugh. The Stanley Cup champion Colorado Avalanche return to ESPN's National Hockey Night for opening night against the St. Louis Blues. Coverage will begin Friday at 8 o'clock right here on ESPN. Holding called against Virginia. A lot of times on a punt, somebody gets beat, they'll grab and hold rather than get that kick blocked. And that's probably what they caught him for. I'd take it back, make him kick it again. That's a good Even though you got good field position, I think I'd still make him to take it back. We're going to take it right here. They have great field position at the 48-yard line. The only thing I'm figuring on a wet night, you may get a mistake in the kicking game. It may benefit you a little bit. But that's still great field position for John Makovic for his decision. Twenty-one to nothing. Virginia leads with 13.59 to play until halftime. This is the best field position start for Texas tonight. John Shivers, who was a backup to Tony Dingle, is right there to hit Williams, and Ricky can go absolutely nowhere. And, Ron, why they're so difficult to run against is when the ball is snapped, there's a lot of movement just before the snap the ball. Now watch them twist inside there. Watch the defensive linemen start to move. They got a little slant coming on, and the Texas offensive line didn't pick John Shivers up. A little movement before the snap, and then a little movement once the ball snapped. I think the counterplay. Brown gets outside. Back over the middle, and it's intercepted by Ferry. The fourth Texas turnover and the third interception. It was just a mistake run by James Brown. And it may be time for John Makovic to bring in the backup quarterback a little bit. Richard Walton just to settle James Brown down. He had a tough game against Notre Dame last week, and he has really opened up here. Four for nine, three interceptions. He's just taken his offense out of the ball game. Crowell in motion to the top of your screen. But they come back to the counter play. And this is Thomas Jones who was in the ball game. He is hit by Atkins. James Ferrier, number 42. You know, his nickname is Potsy. And uh, Rick Lance, the defensive coordinator, said, you know, any name of Potsy being for a linebacker, but I call him Potsy now and feel pretty good about that interception. Derek Lewis was the intended receiver. James Ferry, just a poorly thrown ball by James Brown. It's Thomas Jones in motion, and they get the ball out to him, and he drops the football. 
Now, he's a freshman out of Appalachia, Virginia. And, Mike, this is a guy that it looks as though Anthony Southern, who has been number two in the depth chart, is going to be moved over to fullback because this guy right here is the heir apparent to succeed Tiki Barber. They really like his talents, extremely quick and fast. He's got some big shoes to fill and Tiki Barber. You know, just playing behind him when he comes out of the ball game and going in. So much is expected of the tailback in this Virginia offense. A lot of one-back offense. Third down, and Virginia needs the 35 of Texas to keep this drive going. Lots of time going for Crowell as a flag is down, and it's incomplete. And let's check the marker at the 23-yard line. Taji Allen trying to cover on Crowell. You see Taji Allen just jumping on Jermaine Crowell. Not very good ball identification on that one by Allen. John McAdoo is beside himself and understandable because both sides of the football just making mistake after mistake. Yeah, and when you what compounds that is you're playing a pretty good football team at their their own place, and you can't. You're just going to get buried in an avalanche if you continue that play. Sherman back over the middle, got his tight end Derry inside the 20 yard line. Tyson King is there. Westbrook tripped him up first. I watched the ball game when. Virginia played Maryland and they struggled on offense. As a matter of fact, they took Tim Sherman out of the game, brought Aaron Brooks into the ball game, second quarterback. This guy, Tim Sherman tonight, looks entirely different than he did in that Maryland football game. He has taken control of the huddle, throwing the short passing game, making everything work for this offense and opening up Tiki Barber with the running game. It's been Tim Sherman this first half, been the key player. Texas comes with the blitz, quick out pass, little rub there on the outside. Crowell, the intended receiver. Now for the season, averaging 112 yards a game, and tonight already 131 yards. We have 11.52 to play in the second quarter. He's 9 of 14. That, that experience of being a fifth-year senior is paying off for him tonight. Been around the program, understands the offense. I'm sure his dad, when he gets home, talks to him about the offense. Barber checks back into the lineup, number 21, and of course he gets the handoff, and he gets knocked down by Atkins first. And then a lot of help, as you see, 59, Kyle Richardson on top of uh, Tiki Barber. Well, Atkins just stopped this play from the start. He's 290 pounds, number 96. Just, just starts to get double and just goes right around it and makes the tackle on Tiki Barber. Good movement along with good size. So it's third down. Third down and nine, Virginia. Sherman lobs his pass in the end zone, incomplete. Crowell, the intended receiver. Westbrook was there defensively. Talked to his dad this morning a little bit, Tim Sherman's father, who's a coach here, and I asked him, I said, is it difficult? And he said, it really is tough. And you just think about it, around when things aren't going well and you're sitting in that staff meeting and they're talking about your son, maybe they're going to move the other quarterback in a little bit. I mean, it's it's got to be really tough for him, but he's smiling tonight. Well, Rafael Garcia, you see his numbers, 5 of 6, his longest 42. And the only miss was from 53 yards. This one is going to be from 30 yards. And the left footer has got it through. So there's a timeout. 11.04 until halftime. Virginia 24 to nothing. Don't let a new car payment be a financial burden. Call 1-800-32-SMART. 
about Smart Lease by GMAC. It just might give you something you would. The Cavaliers went to Austin last year. Things looked good when they took the lead and this Rafael Garcia 56 yard field goal with under four minutes to play. But after missing two prior attempts, Bill Dawson answered back with this 50 yarder into the wind. The Longhorns won their first ever game on the last play of the game. As you look at Garcia sets to kick it off. Curtis Jackson to the right. Mike Scarborough is to the left. Boy, he got all of this one and a lot more. Second time tonight that he's kicked it into the end zone. And Texas unable to return it. Complete team effort tonight by Virginia. And you look at the Texas possessions. The first three, two fumbles, or two interceptions and a fumble resulting in three touchdowns. And the fifth one, an interception, a field goal. So when you can qualify your football team with special teams, defense, and offense, they're playing a complete game. Richard Walton, sophomore out of Bay City, Texas. He's 6'5", 217. You see his numbers, 13 of 18. 152 yards, no touchdowns, no interceptions. And I would expect Rick Lance now to heat it up on uh, the young quarterback, Richard Walton, coming into the ball game. Now's the time you turn up the heat a little bit on the backup quarterback. Do not allow him to get started. Took out pass, goes to Mitchell. And he's going to be wrecked after an eight-yard gain. And it's Sharper who was out there to make the hit. The numbers on James Brown tonight, 4 of 9, 63 yards, and 3 interceptions. As now he has changed places with Walton and is signaling in plays from the sideline. I'm not so sure he didn't take so many hits in that Notre Dame game last week that he still may be hurt a little bit from that game. Mitchell, blocker in front, turns it upfield, and... Almost to the 40-yard line. Phelan got a hand on him, and Mike Adams with a good block to get that play going. And let's go down to check again with the Kellen Winslow. Well, Ron, I'm here on the sideline with a young man who knows a little bit about Virginia's defense, Chris Slade, All-American here in Virginia. Now with the pages in his fourth year, your impressions of your former teammates. They're playing outstanding football tonight. I'm so excited to be back here in town. Homecoming, home crowd. The defense is playing, I mean, spectacular. The offense is moving the football. I mean, can't say enough. I'm just happy to be here. Tell me about the jump to the NFL. Was it a difficult one for you? It, it really was. You know, the college the pros a big jump from a mental standpoint. You know, it's got to take a while to get adjusted, but now that I've been in the league for four years, I feel pretty comfortable up there, and I'm happy where I am. Let's talk about this defense. They say this is the best front seven they've had here ever. <laughs> it's hard to argue with that. I mean, when I played here a few years ago, we had a pretty good front seven, but these guys can fly out here, and they're real athletic, sharper, and fairier. And Porn Dexter, those are, I mean, Barber, those got three or four guys who can, I think, can play with us any day. Indeed, they're good. We've got a few highlights there of the shots that were going on. And we'll get back to Chris a little bit later. Back up to you, Ron. 24 to nothing. Virginia leads. Texas right now with a second down. And they need about seven to pick up the first. Williams on that last carry. Priest Holmes close to midfield. And let's see where they're going to spot him out as Poindexter got the hit on him. Holmes, of course, Mike missed last year because got his knee torn up. But he was the hero two years ago of that Sun Bowl game against uh, North Carolina out in El Paso. And Ron Kellen was just talking to Chris Slade. He has the record here for his career sacks with 40. And Dwayne Ashman, uh, who has 18 career sacks, is trying to close that gap a little bit. Mike Frederick, another defensive Lineman, outstanding lineman here has 26, so Ashman's trying to catch Frederick first. First down for the Longhorns. George Welch beginning to pace a little bit, but his club up by 24. That's seven first downs for Texas on the night. Richard Walton operates at quarterback. Priest Holmes 
cuts it back up into the middle, and he is going to be just short of the 46-yard line as Dylan Taylor, a freshman, playing middle linebacker right now, puts the stopper on him. When a team makes as much movement in the defensive line as Virginia does, all of a sudden you just come up to the line of scrimmage and you call the play. You don't go, you just go on first count. You try to catch them so that your offensive line gets a break knowing where they're at before they move. Texas is having problems with the movement of the defensive line of Virginia. Well, let's see if Walton can come up with another first down. Quick out pass. Got it complete and the hit. Going to be close to the first down at the 40. That's Rondé Barber who is there defensively. And Mike, under these situations, even if this is not a first down, this four down situation is no more you kick it away. No, you got to go for it here. You're, you're, you're in a snowball contest here, and you're getting the, the snowball is getting bigger and bigger against you. You've got to get the first down. Got to be third down and one. Walton loves the out of doors. Quite a hunter. Wants to be a doctor. Pre med major at Texas. John Makovic would like him to do a little surgery on this. Uh, Virginia defense right now. Straight ahead, Ricky Williams, and he'll have the first down. When you come up to the offensive line of scrimmage, then all of a sudden you have a play called. The lineman looked to make a call, and then all this movement at the end when the quarterback makes that count, you have to adjust on the move. Tony Dingle was moving around there, and Texas needs to pick up that line movement. And that's why sometimes, Ron, you see him going the first count, they're trying to beat the line movement, and then sometimes they'll go a little bit longer trying to settle before they go. That's what Maryland did to try to take them out of their movement. Walton. Zings his pass, it is tipped and tipped again and almost intercepted by two different people. You could see Sharper was there and also Ashman was there. We've watched some pretty good secondaries this year. West Virginia, the first team that comes to mind, they were outstanding in the secondary. Uh, North Carolina's got the two corners of uh, Blind Williams that can cover. This secondary here with Rondé Barber and Phelan and this Poindexter and Rowe was pretty good secondary, pretty good coverage secondary for Virginia. Well, they got three interceptions tonight. That's 33 straight ball games that they have had a pickoff in. This pass is caught by Fitzgerald. Rowe is there to put the hit on him, and now it's going to be third down, and from where they've spotted it, Texas is going to need about three, maybe three and a half yards to get the first. Passed over seven to play. Excuse me, Pat Fitzgerald made a nice catch there. He was a junior college player, wasn't recruited. Junior college coach called the Texas coaches and said, I got a star here you guys need to take, and that's the kind of coaches you like. We're selling their players out there, and the Texas took him, and he's been a great player. And the Maccabic offense uses the tight end on a regular basis. Pass is caught for the first down. Barber had the cover on Mike Adams. You know Mike is out there thinking, get that thing here before somebody cuts by me and gets the pickoff. Well, it looked like Richard Walton's. Either his right foot slipped out when he was throwing the football, and he couldn't get a lot on it. He had some problems slipping in the back, and you're right. Mike Adams just kept waiting for the ball. As we look at James Brown, and what must be going through, through his mind? He had the tough ball game last week. Played great in the first half. First down, the counter play. It's Williams, and you see him string the play out, and I'll tell you, that defense from Virginia, as Barber finishes him off, but what they did on the inside to string it out is what ruined the entire play. Yeah, when you can make them go sideline to sideline, you're exactly right. All of a sudden, there's nothing up inside on the counter play. Now, when you make it bounce outside, that just gives your secondary a chance to come up and make that hit. Rondé Barber's not only a guy who can intercept the football, but he can also take on a block and make the tackle on Ricky Williams. Second down and 12. Walton gets a safety valve away to Fitzgerald. And 
he'll have it to the 23 as Rowe and Rayner combine on the stop. And what you want to do on defense is exactly what Virginia's doing. When you make that throw and you catch it for four yards, we're going to trade a headache for that four yards, and that's exactly what Virginia's doing in the secondary. They are punishing the receivers of Texas. Third down. They need the Virginia 16-yard line. 24 to nothing, Cavaliers. Richard Walton, the sophomore out of Bay City. Can he get a first? Heavy pressure out in the flat. The ball is in and out of the hands of Ricky Williams. A very catchable football. And it just went right through. Wet night. Couldn't get the handle. They're going to go for the short thing as Phil Dawson will come on for the field goal. But on a night like this, nothing is short, is no, it? No, and you've got to get you've got to get points on the board right now for your ball club. They're stunned. They need a score. They need something positive to get going in here in the first half. 39-yard attempt. Schultes, the putter, is the holder. Plenty of distance. Off to the right. No good. Whatever can go wrong has gone wrong for John McAvick and his team tonight. We'll be right back. Million dollar scholarship program. Burger King donates $100,000 per week in the name of scholar athletes whose achievements go beyond the field in all NCAA divisions. Tonight's students of the game from Texas Center, Ryan Feeberger. He's a sports management business major with a 3-0 GPA. And from Virginia, guard Jeremy Rayleigh. He is a five-year program working on his Bachelor of Science in Health Physical Education and his Master's in Teaching. He maintains a 3-5 GPA. Fitzgerald, tight end, sits in the far sideline with his offensive unit and some deep stairs as they try to find a way to stop Keaton Barber. And on this play, he's going to have a gain of maybe a couple as Taji Allen gets out there first to make the hit. Well, a big part of tonight is the defense of Rick Lance. Here's what they've been able to accomplish. And the biggest figure in that is the four turnovers forced and then the offense being able to cash that in for points. But they have really pressured the quarterback. Ricky Williams has been a non-entity in this ballgame as far as having an impact for the Longhorn. Can't get in the flow. They, they've been able to, the turnovers took Ricky Williams out of the flow of this game. He's got 19 yards and eight carries. Goes back to the tight end, and Gary, who had a touchdown against Texas last week, has a first down as King and Carter knock him down. Now let's check in with Mike Tirico again. Mike. Ron, running backs all over the country having a good day. For Arizona State, Michael Martin's already over 100 yards, and now Terry Battle, his backup, through the Oregon secondary. 21-yard touchdown, ASU by 21. And the Devils are believing that. John Makovic talking with his offense. That's Wilkins, converted running back. They've moved him to wide receiver. And tried to get the middle screen going. He has a gain of one. Tyson King makes the tackle on Just good rhythm in the offense tonight uh, for Virginia. you got to credit the offensive coordinator, Tom O'Brien, the quarterback coach, Joe Krivak, and George Welsh, of course. is a guy who knows a lot about offense, but... If they felt like, and, they, and I know the coaches didn't, but if people felt like they had a quarterback problem here, it was answered. Tim Sherman has answered that for George Welsh tonight. Yep, Aaron Brooks is going to be signaling in plays the way things are going right now. Straight ahead, they go with Anthony Southern. Gray Mosier grabs him by the ankles. And you talked about Aaron Brooks, the backup quarterback. He just needs experience. That's the only thing that really separated him in the battle with Tim Sherman. He just was separated a little bit. And they would like to get him into 20, 25 plays a game, but he's not he's not crossing that field tonight until this game's out of reach because Tim Sherman's in a in a kind of a rhythm and a flow tonight that you like in your quarterback. Third down. And the Cavaliers, to keep this drive going, need the 45-yard line. 
The ball came loose, but uh, he had reception in from where they have spotted him out. Looks as though he's going to be short of the first down as Carter came out to hit him. They're going to punt the football. They've got everything going their way. 252. They want to put Texas and make them go against that great defense of the Virginia Cavaliers. Will Bryce to punt it away. Mike Adams goes back deep for the Longhorns. Ball is still loose, and at the 15-yard line, Chris Morant is the man who blocked it, and Texas has the ball at the Virginia 15-yard line, and it looked as though Bryce couldn't get a handle on the football, took that extra second, and the penetration was we, too much. Tony Holmes is a is a player number 31 with a block and you're right Ron he just couldn't handle the football you see it almost slipped off his foot Mike the amazing thing to show you how bad things have gone for Texas tonight they block it and still couldn't pick up the kick yeah, and take it in for the touchdown well, what you teach your defensive guys is just keep scooping it and knocking it down the field because you're going to get it anyway just keep knocking it all the way down the football field as close that goal line as you can get it Richard Walton with his second offensive series Williams Looking for a spot to run, and there's no place. He's going to lose five yards on the play. Ferrier got to him, but there's anyone of six people who could have made the stop. Well, the point of attack is Dwayne Ashman, the big six foot four, 268 pound senior defensive end. He was able to string the play out and not allow Ricky Williams to go anywhere. Now, watch as the football bounces here. There's no place for Ricky Williams to run. Now, he knows Ferrier's coming down, heating him up in his back. But he can't go anywhere. There's no place to go at the point of attack. Mike, it looks as though on this defense, on this wet field, anything slow developing is death. Takes long, takes a long time to run sideline to sideline. Blitz, pass, incomplete. See, this is what I felt they would do against Texas. When you bring a backup quarterback in on a night level when you got a 24-0 lead, heat him up. Here comes James Ferrier, number 42, on an outside blitz. And, Ron, the difference in he and some of the other linebackers you see across the country, he's 6'2", 230, so he's usually going to be blocked by a running back, and he'll run over the running back. Timeout, 136, left until the halftime. We'll be right back. The situation, Texas with a third down and 15. They own the ball at the Virginia 20-yard line following a blocked punt. Richard Walton sets in the pocket under heavy pressure. Back over the middle and incomplete as Sharper came across and knocked it loose. John Harris was coming with some great pressure right. inside. To be a great defense, and what Texas was trying to do is get the ball to Priest Holmes out of the backfield, but to be a great defense, you see Priest Holmes number 33. There's the curl route on the outside by Curtis Jackson is you must take the football when all of a sudden a team gets a break and gets inside your 30 yard line you must not allow them in the end zone and that's exactly what this virginia defense did they rose to the occasion and shut down this texas offense 30 uh, we're just going to be a 37 yard attempt and it, he placed down at the 27 schultz is holding He's got this with him. So Texas is on the scoreboard at the 124 mark. Left until halftime, and it's Virginia 24 to 3. Now the ESPN next Saturday is the place to be at 7. It's an ACC battle as the Clemson Tigers head to Tallahassee to take on Warwick Dunn and the number two ranked Florida State Seminoles. But start the day with College Game Day at 11.30 a.m. and the Residence Inn College School Board Show at 10 p.m.
But I think what John McAvick will do at halftime, I think he still has to go back to James Brown. I think James Brown's the one that got you here, and I know John McAvick uh, has a ball club. It's a little stunned right now. It's still a little after effects of the Notre Dame game, but that field goal will help. But I still think the guy that's going to win this ball game is going to be James Brown if they're going to get back in this game. Mike, you remember what I said about when things go bad? They blocked the kick and couldn't pick it up to score, and there's an example. Three plays minus five yards, and they have to come away with three instead of a touchdown. And, and now, Taya, you, you're exactly right. And when you look at Richard Walton, I'm by no means saying that he hasn't done a job. He's done exactly what the backup quarterback's supposed to do. Go in, give you stability, move your team, and then do a repair job. But really, the key for Texas has always been James Brown. Look at Rowe and Terrence Wilkins back deep as the rain continues to fall. Started probably about 15 minutes before kickoff. We just had a deluge, and it's been a steady, steady drizzle just like this all night long. Virginia hasn't felt it. I'm afraid Texas has. And it's a squib kick. High pooch kick at the 32. Mike Tirico, let's check back with you. All right, Ron, coming up, it is the GMAC Halftime Report. We know the eight teams in the Major League Baseball playoffs. We'll tell you how everything's shaken down. What a great day for Troy Davis. We'll show you a record-setting performance. And Chris Lee and Kirk will recap the action in South Bend. Ohio State set itself up for another big one. We'll see you in a few minutes. Guys? Okay, Mike. Ricky Williams on the sideline wondering what in the world has happened in this first 30 minutes. Texas uses a pooch kick there to make sure that Virginia does not come away with a return. So they go from their own 32-yard line. Barber spins off the tackler and is going to wind up with a gain of almost eight yards. Tiki Barber, when he came into the preseason, tried to put on a little weight, 208 pounds. George Wells said, I knew it was a mistake, and I told Tiki Barber, but now he's down to 195, averaging six yards a carry tonight. Barber found out that uh, it was a fantasy, that he could not play way more, that he was much more mobile and agile at 195. And it's shown tonight. Bounces it outside. You see the pressure? That's Allen, and he will knock him out of bounds for no gain. Well, you want to build a fence when you're on defense, and when that ball starts bouncing, you keep contained, and that's exactly what Texas did. Tim Sherman, I think he's been a major difference in this first half. 12 of 18, 146, but he set the tempo. He set the rhythm for the offense. They attacked the Texas defense. He opened up Tiki Barber in the running game by his passing. Three, the pitch comes to Barber. Gets by one. And close to the first down at the 43-yard line. Coming up at a halftime, the GMAC halftime report. The top stories, now Major League Baseball down to the wire. Troy Davis makes a statement, <laughs> a very loud one, and a report from Notre Dame. That and more coming up on the GMAC halftime report. You know, Rondi Barber on the sideline, the uh, twin brother of Tiki Barber. He is an interception tonight. Interestingly enough, last year, the game down in Austin was the only game that Tiki Barber did not score a touchdown in. Tonight, he has three in the first half. Interesting, I don't know if you saw the interview we had with him earlier today on game day, Mike. But he said, you know, how many yards, total yardage really is not that big a deal to him. It's how many significant plays he makes to contribute to the offense. He had three straight carries that he scored touchdown. I think that is significant enough. That's 
the end of the first half of their score. Virginia 24 and Texas 3. Now let's join Mike Tirico for the GMAC Halftime Report. Mike? Okay, Ron, so John Makovic, who was a quarterback at Wake Forest in his playing days, not a very happy return to ACC country, 21-point game at halftime. Coming up, it is the GMAC Halftime Report. As mentioned, Chris... Boy, they have done a job tonight. Tiki Barber, first touchdown. Didn't score last year against Texas. Had that on a 60-yard run. Here, Adams has it, loses the ball. Rondé Barber comes up with the interception. Now Tiki Barber, 26-yard touchdown run, and he's not done. This one from 12 yards, his third first-half touchdown. And at the intermission, how we stand is Virginia up by 21 points. So when you look at the Twins and their numbers tonight, Rondé with one interception, three tackles, two for a loss. And for Tiki, 16 carries, 89 yards, and three touchdowns. Sean Mitchell, number three, to the right of your screen. Mike Scarborough is the other deep back. He is to the near side. Garcia to kick it off. Mitchell from the two. Tries to get to the sideline out of bounds at the 30. Well, just a moment ago, as Texas came back out on the field, Kellen Winslow had an opportunity to talk with John Makovic about that first half. Coach, your quarterback had three interceptions in the first half. You pulled him. You went with the backup. Who are we going to see in the second half? Well, I'm not sure. Probably Richard Walton to start, but I'm not against bringing James back in. James is okay. We saw a little injury to his hand earlier. Uh, physically, he's fine. But I think the plays, we just needed to see if we could change some things and get a little momentum going our way. Uh, we, we move the ball a little bit, but three points is not enough. We really have to have a heck of a second half. What about your defense? The defense has been on the field. They made uh, missed tackles. Tiki Barber hasn't uh, given us a very good day. What do you think about Virginia's defense? Are you impressed with them? Well, yeah, they're a good football team. We knew that. We didn't think they were a bad football team. That's not a mistake that they're playing the way they are. All right, Coach, thanks a lot. Good luck to you. Ricky Williams makes the reception, and Mike, it looked as though that when he caught it that his knee was on the ground. That's good for 20 yards. First down. Texas needs every break they can get right now, and they'd like to get something going on this opening series in the second half. Well, John Makovic, uh, exactly, he's going to go with Richard Walton. I expect that we're going to see James Brown. He's just looking for a little spark here in the second half uh, to get this Texas offense moving a little bit. Mitchell. Trip. And it's going to be down at around the 47 as Poindexter came up to get down on top of him. The whole philosophy of this Texas defense is to make you go 60, 70, 80 yards. You're going to make a mistake. They've got a front Virginia, four, that's yeah. a Virginia front four, that's very, very difficult to move. They've got speed in the secondary at the linebacker spots. Octavius Bishop at left tackle. He's working against Ashman. Pass batted down at the line of scrimmage. That was Dingle and came right back to Walton, the quarterback. And he will take it, I believe, for the first down at the 40-yard line. Wow, what a play. Walton the Walton. <laughs> He'll take that completion. Tony Dingle, number 89, who's six foot three, gets his hands up, deflects the ball, goes right back to Richard Walton. Wisely moves it down the football field. Close to first down. I think they're going to bring in a change. It gives us an opportunity. Dingle against Maryland. The Virginia offense couldn't score in the first half. He intercepted a pass and took it in for the touchdown, and that's how much they led 7 to nothing. He also has a fumble recovery for a touchdown this year. You're talking about that interception. Rick Lance, the defensive coordinator, said that he went the wrong way on the play on a twist. Then he got bumped, and so all of a sudden I went the wrong way. He's bumped, and then they threw the interception to him, so he said he got lucky because he was in the wrong spot. <laughs> Priest Holmes comes into the lineup. Sean Mitchell will go out. It is a first down for Texas. 
Texas could get something on the board right here, we could still have ourselves a ball game. Well, I the think they're, they're still alive. They the, just need to show some kind that, of. That's they right. They need to get a big play against some this defense. Some kind of spark. They uh, they just haven't done that in the first half of play. Walton going to go on top. He got him wide open. Adams at the five and down to the one yard line. First and goal, Texas. That's the big play you need because now that brings your ball club back into the ball game a little bit. Emotionally, now they got a shot to get back in this thing. Richard Walton's going to find Mike Adams down the corner, and then Anthony Poindexter caught him in some kind of a combination coverage. You see number 19, Rondé Barber taking away the outside cut, but then Anthony Poindexter trying to come over the top, couldn't make the play, and Texas in business on the one-yard line. That's good for 39 yards. Priest Holmes goes airborne and touchdown Texas. So 93 seconds into the second half, the Longhorns answer what their pep talk was about. And it wasn't a pep talk at halftime. I would imagine it was a pretty stern lashing by that gentleman. One thing about John McAvick, he doesn't lose his poise. And uh, even though a lot of people will say, you know, he's not an emotional guy, I think what he's doing on the sideline is saying he's got confidence. He, he hasn't lost his poise. I'm sure he didn't lose it at halftime. Thompson with the extra point, and he's got it. So let's take a timeout, and as we head to break, another look at Priest Holmes, the senior out of San Antonio Marshall. As he goes airborne right by Poindexter, 24 to 10. Today, Michael Adams, the one that set it up to keep play, a 39-yard reception, five plays, 71 yards, 133 off the clock, and Priest Holmes scores the touchdown. And you're looking at the career leader in receptions for the Texas Longhorns. Rowan Wilkins will be back in a deep safety. Now let's see if, in fact, Stockton will go with that pooch kick which he did in the first half they used that same thing against Notre Dame or will he kick it away I think he'll kick it deep try to see if they can pin this Virginia offense down and get them to make a mistake yeah you're right Mike he kicks it away and this is Wilkins at the seven flag comes down and for Virginia, they're going to take over with one of the worst field positions they've had all night following this penalty. Well, with the Padres win earlier today, there is one game tomorrow affecting the Major League Baseball playoff, and we'll have it for you. ESPN will bring you the Padres and the Dodgers at 4 o'clock Eastern time. They'll play for the Western Division Championship and the wild card spot. ESPN also will start the divisional playoffs on Tuesday, 1 o'clock Eastern, Cleveland against Baltimore, followed by the National League Divisional Playoff game at 4. And they have marked this penalty off against Texas for an illegal block below the knee on Thomas Jones number six he trying was to trying to the take wedge. the wedge out and he went low on it and uh, he got the penalty so rather than the penalty being against Virginia which we had assumed they take over with great field position at the 45 Sherman throws the pass almost intercepted by Allen Owen is the man that he wanted Tim Sherman hasn't made a lot of mistakes tonight, but when he is in trouble is when he rolls to the left. He can't get square to the line of scrimmage and really has been erratic on his couple passes that roll into the left side. Tries to get outside and breaks the tackle. He's going to wind up with a four-yard gain. Mike Tirico, let's check back with you. Ron, Big 12 against the WAC this year is 5-5. Five and five. This McDonald's breakaway takes us to Salt Lake City, where Kansas was up 7-0 until Chris Fuamatu Ma follow with a touchdown run. Tied the game at 7. Good one on the deuce tonight. Ron and Mike. Okay. 
The WAC has been tough on a lot of people, haven't they? They really have. And we've always known they're a great conference. And uh, sometimes they just do not get respect across the country. I think this is a, a lot of big plays in the ball game. Third down and five. If Texas were to stop them right here, Mike, emotionally, a very big boost for this Longhorn football team. Sherman going to go long in the middle. Got a man wide open. And Wilkins had it go right through his hand. Good heavens, he's open. You talked about Wilkins. He moved from tailback. And now he's a wide receiver. He just lost this ball. Just couldn't find the football. He wide open down the middle against too deep coverage. And Trey Thomas is really happy he did lose the football. Breathing a little easier. <laughs> Will Bryce to punt from the 35. As you look at Mike Adams, high pass from center. And Adams signals for the fair catch and makes it at the 15. So the Texas defense does their job. Timeout, 24 to 10, our new score, Virginia on top. The 10 in this crowd. All of a sudden, they were kind of getting back in here late. As you look at the numbers, the well, Texas, we, I'm sorry. That's all right. We talked about the primetime players, and uh, Tiki Barber's had a great ball game today. Ricky Williams, just because of the game, has not been able to get untracked a little bit, falling behind so quickly. Crowd in that opening series, not in the ball game, but now they're trying to help out the defense. Is Scarborough the intended receiver? And Walton just clearly threw that one in behind him. Well, the big difference in this ball game is the inability of Texas to run. You, we say it all the time. Uh, you know, you've got to be able to run the football. And the Virginia defense came into this night averaging only giving up 50 yards a game. And so far tonight, they've been under that. Texas is at only 42 yards rushing the football. Good look at that down four. Harris, Dingle, White, and Ashman. Here's Williams. Tried to make his cut, slipped a little bit, and there's Poindexter just picked up a really, really dumb penalty. He is down three seconds, and now, instead of causing Texas to kick the football, it's going to be a personal foul and a first down. I guarantee you, Rick Lance on the sideline is just going crazy. And he's one of the players that when he says, when he, Rick Lance talks about his defense, he said, Anthony Poindexter is the one player that we cannot have off the field. But again, just a very, very uh, dumb penalty. So the ball out to the 34-yard line and a first down. See, sometimes you can have turnovers, intercepted passes, but that's just like a turnover there because you're right, they had him stopped. Mike, this gets the 15 back. The Texas lost on that penalty on the kick as far as field position. They fake the counter tray, and it's the reverse. Mike Adams with a block. Gets another block, and it is a nice play by Barber. If Barber doesn't get a hand on him, I'm not so sure if we're not still seeing 40, 30, 20, 10 touchdown. Good design of the play, and a great call because you want to reverse against a fast-blowing defense, and when you're having a hard time running the football, all of a sudden they're going to bring Michael Adams around on the reverse. Now watch the linebackers and defensive line. They run so well, everybody's moving to the football. Now Michael Adams uses his speed to pick up more field position. You're right, Rondé Barber with a, with a pretty good tackle. You know, Harris stayed at home. He read the pulling... Uh, Lineman as Walton is sacked and it's Ashman who got through to get him. It's the second sack of Texas quarterbacks tonight. Well, that's his 19th career sack. Played 41 straight games for this Virginia defense. And when I talked to him last night, I said, who's your favorite players? He said, oh, mean Joe Green was my favorite. But he said, I liked Earl Campbell. You know, here he's playing Texas and Earl Campbell was one of his favorite players. He will play. I mean, he is a good-looking defensive lineman that can run. Second down and 12. Williams tries to get loose. Ball is loose, and Virginia would appear to have recovered it. Yes, and that's going to be Phelan. Five Texas turnovers.
it looked like, and I'm not sure whether Anthony Poindexter made this tackle. It may have been Wally Rayner, number 44. There's Poindexter with the tackle, and then Rayner comes in with his headgear, puts it on the football, and then Stephen Phelan, number 49, with the recovery. That ball came loose. Nobody in a white jersey saw that it had come loose. Sherman going to go long, looking for Corral, and it is intercepted by Texas. That is Westbrook, and a flag is down. Well, I like to call, though. I'll tell you, anytime you get a team when they fumble that football, and you're close to midfield, take advantage of it and take the long shot. Wow, I'll tell you what, I'm not sure I agree with this call. Brian Westbrook, number 30. What happens on this play is Virginia trying to take advantage of the turnover, trying to catch the defense down a little bit. Well, I don't, I don't see any penalty there. That's not even a penalty a touch. No, I, I don't see any penalty there. <laughs> Let's take a look here. Well, there's, I know his left hand goes up a little bit to feel where the receiver's at. And I don't know. Call the push on it. That's on Brian Westbrook. When John McAvick watches this video tomorrow, ACC head of officials may get a phone call. There have been a few. Barber. Take another look at it, because this is a big play in this ballgame. Clearly his hands on the jersey. Jermaine Crowell, and then Bryant Westbrook going up for the interception. Tell you this, I said it the other day in the Thursday night game, football's still a contact sport. You gotta let a few things go here. Seven penalties now against the Longhorns for 75 yards, three against Virginia. Barber. Gonna be third down, and let's check in once again with Mike Tirico. Well, Ron, Oregon had cut the ASU lead to 34-20. They were driving, but fumbled the football. Arizona State takes over, and Keith Poole, a great reverse, works it inside the 10-yard line in this great run. He caught Jake Plummer's fourth touchdown pass of the night. Arizona State back up 21. Frank Push is probably even smiling at this football team out there. This is a name the stadium after the great coach at Arizona State. Third down, and they need the 27-yard line. And now Sherman wants to call a timeout. So we'll take it with him. Virginia 24 to 10 and driving. Just a little bit here in Charlottesville in our situation. Texas defense needing desperately to stop this one. It is third down at about two and a half yards, and the ball just inside the Longhorn 29. Stumbles. Barber cannot get the first down. That play was doomed from the beginning as Sherman either had his foot stepped on or tripped. Got the handoff to Barber. And Carter was there defensively. So it is fourth down. And George Welch says we are going to go for this first down. No. 16, Rafael Garcia has come into the lineup. And this is going to be an attempt just outside the 36. Ron, he made a 56-yarder in practice before the game. Down. Plenty of distance. And plenty of accuracy. He's good from 47 yards. Well, the Winston Cup Series rolls on tomorrow from North Wilkesboro Speedway with the Tyson Hottie Farms 400.
Jeff Gordon leads Terry Labonte and Dale Jarrett in the Winston Cup point standings. This 250 mile race will be the last at the North Wicksboro Speedway. ESPN's coverage begins tomorrow at 1 o'clock Eastern Time. Twenty-seven to ten. Mike Godfrey. Situation where the pass interference penalty was was huge on that serve. Well, it was huge because it gave field position and allowed the field goal. And you change the field position with that penalty. Mike Adams comes over to uh, console one of his defensive comrades and Bryant Westbrook, saying, "Hey, you guys played well, but." Didn't get all the breaks on that one. Well, last year, George Welsh complained a little bit about the officiating yes, in, the, in the Texas game. He felt like there was a field goal was made that they ruled it was not good. And then tonight, we've had some complaints maybe from the Texas sideline. That's why I like split crews. I like a Big 12, half of the Big 12 and half of the ACC. I've always felt that was better than to have one conference officiating the ball game in intersectional play. Sean Mitchell to the left of Scarborough. That you saw on the other side. Garcia's kick. He sent two into the end zone tonight. Scarborough will return this one. Two yards deep. Right up the middle. And Scarborough close to the 30 yard line. Mike Tirico, let's go back to you. Over on the deuce and in Salt Lake City, another nice Utah drive against Kansas. Eight plays, 75 yards, up over the top for his second touchdown of the night. Chris Fuamatu Ma'afala and Utah. Utes guys, lead by seven. It's as hard to stop as his name is to pronounce. They want a little respect in that whack. So Texas goes on offense. Wayne. McGarity, number eight, has come in at wide receiver. Walton continues to operate as quarterback for the Longhorn. Pass in the flat, got it complete. Out to the 36, and that's the young man we were just talking about, McGarity. Here was a guy that John said during the week that he needed to get him into the ball game a little bit more. Has been a running back, moved to wide receiver. He's a big play guy who they say we need to get on the field and get the football to it. Second and two, it's Williams as Ashman comes from behind to catch him to the ankles. Dwayne Ashman just came off the corner. Watch him close and now watch him flatten out. That's the key. Flatten out right now and make the tackle on Ricky Williams. Don't take a lot of wasted steps up the football field. Dwayne Ashman and what you want in the defensive line is somebody can change directions immediately. Mike, it's third down. They did not pick up the first down. And the Virginia players on the sideline asking this crowd to get up and make some noise. Well, you figure Ricky Williams is going to get this football, 220 pounds. John Mitchell. And he turns the corner, Phelan, and he gets by him, but Phelan got just enough of him to knock him out of bounds. And that would have been a mismatch in speed. Phelan against Sean Mitchell. Now, Sean Mitchell just blew through that hole. He's a speed tailback at 5'10". Pretty good blocking at the point of attack. Stephen Phelan, the uh, former walk-on here at Virginia who earned a scholarship, just stuck around the program for two years and then finally got a scholarship. Now he's starting in the secondary. Mitchell to the sideline and Ricky Williams comes back in, number 11. Walton's pass overthrown. McGarity in the area, and I assume that's who he was throwing to, but it was well over McGarity's head at 5'8". Well, you have to credit Texas offensive line. They've done a much better job here in the second half of protecting. Keeping a tight end in, number 81, Pat Fitzgerald to block on Dwayne Ashman, getting the back to help, but they had good protection for Richard Walton on that pass play. Twenty-seven to ten, Virginia. Six thirty-four to play, third quarter. Counter play. Here comes Williams. Williams will get out of the way. 
These guys get here quickly enough. <laughs> Ferrier and Barber combined on the stop. There just has not been a lot of running room for Ricky Williams tonight. Picked up a couple extra yards after contact here, but just there's no place for him to go. Trying to follow Jay Humphrey's block, but you can see the tackle. First of all, Rondé Barber bounces off of him, but there's always three or four blue shirts around Ricky Williams. Third down, and Texas needs the Virginia 38-yard line. Blitz right up the middle. They pick it up, and the pass is caught. For the first down at the 33, Barber makes the stop, but Michael Adams grabs it in. What made that play again, Ron? Pass protection. They're allowing Richard Walton some time to throw the football. Good adjustments by John Makovic at half. Ricky Williams, we talked about an excellent running back. You see him at the one back. Now, he sees the blitz coming inside. He picks up the linebacker coming in to try to make the tackle. He blocks it long enough for Richard Walton to get that pass to Mike Adams. Mike Adams with five catches, 84 yards. Dumps it off to Williams. Williams says he's going to take it back into the middle of the field, and he does at the 27 as Rayner trips him up. They make you work, though. They make you work the field, except for the one long pass to Mike Adams. Everything has been short plays, and they just make you work up the football field. Interesting, if you don't know the story, Ricky Williams is not on scholarship because he is a professional baseball player. Plays with the Philadelphia organization. And our Peter Gammons, our baseball expert, said he's the best two-sport athlete since Brian Jordan. Second down. They fake it to him. Walton with a nice move. Gets his pass away and has it complete. First and ten at the 12-yard line. At this time, Dustin Armstrong, who was a red shirt freshman out of Cleburne, Texas, picks up 16 yards. Richard Walton has stepped up big in the second half. Now, he's played a, an excellent second half this Texas offensive football team. Good fake here. Makes a little move here with the football, trying to get by John Harris. Now throws the football, gets a little pressure from Patrick Kearney. Quick count. Counter. Williams back into the sideline. Who does he take a hit? The ball came loose. But they say, nope, he's down just inside the 10. Wally Rayner, the middle linebacker again, number 44, has played big tonight against the run of Texas. You know, and for the first time tonight, this Virginia defense seems a little bit winded. Now, they've had to play a lot in the second half, Mike. Look a little tired. 158 to 12 in the second half. Quick handoff to Williams, right side. And he's going to be tripped up short of the first down. Poindexter makes the stop. Rainer over the top. Always felt John Makovic was an excellent play caller. He always calls plays that when you expect him to do something, he goes another way. Just a little quick draw trap to Ricky Williams on that play. Taking advantage of the defensive line coming up the field on the pass rush. 11th play of the drive. Walton lobs it, overthrown, and he had Fitzgerald open. And John Makovic says, let's get three points. Let's come away with something. Yeah, it's, it's been a tough night for his offense, and you expect him to try to take the ball to the four-yard line here against a pretty good Virginia defense. If you can narrow it down to two scores again, still a lot of time. Still 2.58 left in the third quarter. This would bring it back to a 14-point ball game. the snap and <laughs> give a star to Mark Schultes who is the punter he's the holder gets it down and the three points is recorded so it's 27 to 13 Ricky Williams on the sideline getting a breather Arizona 
State in the fourth period, leading Oregon 34 to 13. And LSU in the second period. Boy, we're going to have another great running back on primetime next week. You know him, Warwick Dunn, one of college football's most exciting runners. Ran for 73 yards today and 21 carries. Don't forget, next week against Clemson, number two Florida State, and our kickoff time is 7 o'clock rather than 7.30 Eastern time. 7 o'clock next week, the Knowles playing host to Clemson. Dwayne Ashman, number 94, the injured Cavalier, walking off the field. You know, Dwayne Ashman, the outstanding defensive end who Mike talked about, coming off the field under his own power but limping. So we'll try to check on his status. Ricky Williams trying to come back in our prime time challenge tonight. Tiki Barber still with about the same statistics he had in the first half. But now all of a sudden, Ricky Williams getting the football a little bit more here in the second half. Stockton again will kick it off for Texas. Wilkins, one of the deep men. Here they go with that pooch kick again. Fair catch signal for, and is made at the 27-yard line. And it's made by Shannon Taylor, a linebacker who was in a blocking position. And that's what you teach, Ron. Anything pooched over the front line, you want a fair catch it. You don't want to take any chance on any kind of collisions of the kicking team getting down too quickly. So you instruct all your up people, if the ball's kicked high, just fair catch it. 253 left in the third. Virginia 27 to 13. They have been error free so far. Texas with five turnovers. Sherman with the option play. 95. Gray Mosier wraps him up. Mike Tirico, what do you have for us? Ron, back to close out this Arizona State game as Oregon keeps getting closer and closer. ASU finally puts it away here. Tony Battle, Terry Battle, excuse me, 35-yard weaving run. Over 1,100 yards of offense combined by these two teams. Arizona State leading late by 21. See, our game clock is about now under 220. Sherman going to run it. And he gets whacked by Tyson King. But he will have the Virginia first down. Tyson King with a good tackle. He's led Texas in tackles the past two seasons. Tim Sherman with a good decision to run the football and pick up the first down. Anybody that's worried about the quarterback situation in Virginia can put that to rest. They've got themselves pretty good signal caller. Southern's going to take it for a gain of about three. That's Humphrey. Who well, hits him first. Well, you talk about systems, and you look at the ACC passing efficiency leaders, and you see Virginia up there four times, and that's because of George Welsh's system. You like to get a quarterback that fits your system, high percentage throws, and that's exactly what Virginia does in their offensive package. Like Lyndon Fani with the Indianapolis Colts, I think he really helped Jimmy Harbaugh. System again. Time to fake the counter. Sets up the throw long. Flag is down, and the ball is knocked away. And they are... <laughs> you know, the flag... The interesting thing on this play, and watching downfield, Wilkins is saying he was pushing, but Wilkins slowed down on him. They get a call pass interference on Texas. Well, 
See, now he's stopping right there. He knows exactly what he's doing, and with his right hand, he's trying to push off Allen. <laughs> oh, my. When you throw that ball up long like that, a lot of things can happen for you. And tonight it's happened a couple times for Virginia. They picked up some interference calls, kept drives alive. Texas with eight penalties. Tack on the turnovers. Been a rough mistake night for the Texas Longhorns. Tiki Barber will take it to the 40-yard line. Clarence Martin down at the bottom of that stack, and we are under one minute to play third quarter. Well, what Virginia's doing right now, Ron, is taking a lot of clock. They're starting to make that clock and those minutes disappear on the Texas team. And going to go to the 33-yard line as Bryant Westbrook will come over and get Sherman. You know we got a quarter to go. And I'll tell you, my player of the game for Virginia right now is Tim Sherman because he has given the spark that this offense needed. So that's the end of the third quarter. And as they change ends of the field, the Virginia Cavaliers, 27-13. minutes it is a third down situation Virginia and just under a yard to pick up the first down Sherman pitches back to Barber and he has to get out of bounds I don't know if he got the first down or not well, he alertly tried to reach that football out to pick up the first down. Always knows where he's at on that football field. Tiki Barber. So you know the reason I like split crews? Because just what's happened there. The Texas players are starting to argue with the officials. You'd like to at least see somebody you've seen before. And uh, you know, that just really gives you a comfort level for your players and your coaches. Come on, number 30, let's go. You know, he got it for two. Well, you can see he missed it just by a, about three links of that chain. Here's Tiki Barber. He's going to reach out. Watch at the end of this play. Westbrook trying to make the tackle, but he alertly just holds that football out to try to pick up that first down. Aaron Humphrey made that tackle. Tim Sherman showed me he's a pretty good running quarterback. Maybe a quarterback sneak here, or do you put the ball in Tiki's hands? I'd say Barber. I don't like taking the ball off the line of scrimmage. I felt like I had a good push in that offensive line. I got a veteran senior center there locked, and I might not take it off the ball off the line of scrimmage. Fourth down, quarterback sneak. Anytime you take it, especially on a wet night, anytime you take the ball off the uh, line of scrimmage, you got a chance of some things happening. And Tom Lachlan's pretty good center, so a pretty good decision by Tom O'Brien, the offensive coordinator. <laughs> 29, Brian Owen checks into the ball game at wide receiver. He goes wide to the right, which is going to be top of your screen. Sherman missed by Humphrey loses the ball and it's been picked up by Kyle Richardson of Texas and they are going to whistle the play down Jim Sherman stop 
Incomplete pass is what they're going to call it. Behind the line of scrimmage like a shovel drawer. Good block by Tiki Barber. Tim Sherman in trouble. Tries to flip the ball. Good pressure by the Texas defense. So second down and 10. Twenty-seven to thirteen, Virginia leads. Two touchdowns here early in this fourth period. Draw play, not going to get by Atkins. Mike Tirico, let's go back to you. What do you have for us, partner? Well, Ron, Mike Fouts, the nephew of Hall of Fame quarterback Dan Fouts, putting on quite a show. Eight touchdowns, no interceptions this year. Here's the eighth touchdown, 65 yards to Kevin Dyson. Utah on the deuce leads Kansas by 14, and it is a final now. Arizona State beat Oregon 48-27. Next up for Arizona State, Boise State at home. So, Mike, uh, Kansas was one of only three teams of the Big 12 left uh, undefeated. And that in jeopardy right now. And we've had a penalty here. Offside on Texas. Again, I, I, you see on the field a lot of arguing between the players and the officials right now. They're going to get their game, regain their poise a little bit on the field. Just inside the 25. Let's see Jones. Also Aaron Humphrey down at the bottom of the pile and it's a check in with the Kellen Winslow Kellen well Ron and Mike in order to be a Heisman Trophy candidate and to win the Heisman Trophy not only do you have to be a good football player you've got to have a good SID department and here at Virginia they're doing all kinds of things promotional type stuff to get the word out on Tiki Barber postcards highlighters he even has a page on the internet and he's got a very good job of getting the word out they should be saluted here at Virginia for getting the word out on Tiki Barber Third down, and they need the 22-yard line. Sherman rolls that pocket to the open side of the field and just going to do it himself. And, in fact, he will score. Stadium. There's a proud father, Tom Sherman, who, the coach for uh, Virginia, and he probably recruited his son. So he's taking the credit for recruiting his son and bringing his son along as the quarterback for Virginia. Extra point by Garcia is good. And as we go to break, let's take one more look. Anthony Southern had an outstanding block on the play. Also, Tiki Barber is there, blocking for his quarterback. Out of the grasp of Humphrey, 34th. What if your car slips off? It looks as though that the quarterback question is over. Sherman has been splitting time with Aaron Brooks, but I don't think so after tonight. And this time he does it himself as he takes it in on the sweep. And it's 34 to 13 with just over 13 minutes to play. And you're right because now all the players big game confidence now is going to go to Tim Sherman. The players know what he delivered tonight in a big game atmosphere and the clutch. He's been the difference. And you can take all the things that have happened tonight. The biggest thing I think that Texas has not been able to overcome is Tim Sherman's play at quarterback. He hasn't made mistakes. Garcia's kick. Scarborough from the two. Ball is loose. Texas recovers at the 25. With Tim Sherman, he's had a night where he hasn't made any mistakes. Throwing the football high percentage, 146 yards. Big rushing yardage and a touchdown. Just completely been in control of his own offense. Because of the play calling, it really opened up the running game for Tiki Barber when they needed it. And you know this defense is now going to pin their ears back and come after Richard Walton. 
Yep, they will do just that. Ricky Williams spins it out over the 30-yard line. Well, with the Padres win earlier today, there is one game tomorrow affecting the Major League Baseball playoffs, and we'll have it for you. ESPN will bring you the Padres against the Dodgers, 4 o'clock Eastern time. And, of course, they play for the Western Division Championship and the wild card spot. And then ESPN will also start the divisional playoffs on Tuesday, 1 o'clock Eastern, Cleveland against Baltimore, followed by the National League Divisional Playoffs, that game at 4 o'clock. Williams again. Just short of the first down at the 34. John Harris is down at the bottom of that stack. All the pressure that this Virginia defense applies to you. Four tackles for losses. You can see the pressures on the quarterbacks. Turnover scores tonight five. And remember, they have not given up much yardage versus the run. You're looking at a pretty complete defense. Everybody in the ACC is going to have problems with this defense. Yeah, they will. Texas, 5 of 10 and third down conversions. Williams will have this one, though. You see 99 Shivers. Well, now they're going to, from where they've spotted the ball, Mike, I don't know if he got the first down or not. Tonight, Tiki Barber again. Most of his damage was done in the first half. Ricky Williams really has come alive in the second half, getting, getting the ball a little bit more, but uh, in yards after contact. I think the key there is the missed tackles by the Texas defense on Tiki Barber. A lot of missed tackles. John McAvick talked about it to Kevin Kellen Winslow at halftime. Well, he didn't get it. It appeared that he had the 35-yard line when he went off tackle, but the officials say no. Well, it, it doesn't matter because they're going to go for it anyway. It matters because they had a first down, but they've got to go for it. John's on the official, and you can see that he is just in the ear of the official in front of him. He is not happy. He is really giving him an earful. We call the plays as a head coach. You've got to continually keep in the ball game, but. He's trying to get a point across to that official. He did not like that spot. That stinks. <laughs> and that's about as out of control as you'll see him on the sideline, I think. <laughs> oh, without a doubt. He, he knows he has to call the game with help from Gene Dahlquist up here in the press box, but got to continue to be thinking a play ahead. Walton calls a timeout with 11.07 to play in the ball game. Virginia, 34 to 13. Just over 11 minutes to play in the ball game. Virginia, 34 to 13. Don't forget, coming up immediately following our uh, ball game here, the residents in college football school board. That's coming up next. Well, I look for a lot of pressure out of this Virginia defense and to, to try to go for an interception right here. Try to put a lot of pressure on Richard Walton. with the block and then he will pick up the first down at the 46 as Phelan made the stop on him and Walton took pretty good shot after he got rid of the football. Well, Stephen Phelan was a walk on as we said before his PA announcer at his ball games in high school was Chet Moeller who was a standout safety for George Welsh at Navy. He called him he said this guy can play. He's out of Montgomery Alabama. Four point high school student and uh, walked on here and has earned a scholarship. Walton's pass 
dropped by McGarity. Sharper was out there on him. Just a little bit behind him. Couldn't hold on. Ron, you couldn't go on uh, this evening without looking at that Texas football team. And even though they said they had the Notre Dame game out of their system, that's no excuse. But I think it's been a, a ball club that's had a tough time putting that game behind them, especially James Brown. James Brown also, uh, this year, in all the games that they have played, has not really turned it loose, I don't think, the way he had in the past. It used to be just, hey, I'll take on any situation. Playing more cautious, not the same way. I don't know if the shoulder's still bothering him or what. I think he had some hits in that Notre Dame game, and I think he's hurt a little bit. Ricky Williams tries to bounce it to the outside, and he will have about three. That's it as the ball comes loose. And Williams is shaken up. Williams tried to bounce it to the outside and got hit by a couple of people. I think it was Maurice Anderson, number 85, chasing Ricky Williams. He's about 290 pounds coming down on. Could be the shoulder. Mike Tirico, let's check in with you while Ricky Williams is being helped off the field. Well, Ron, wants want to show everyone a couple of the great finishes today. Triple overtime for Cal and Oregon State. Pat Barnes, the keeper. And in Berkeley, the Golden Bears stay undefeated for Steve Mariucci. 4-0, Oregon State now the nation's longest losing streak at 14. We had a triple overtime game tonight. The oldest rivalry west of the Alleghenies. The victory bell goes to Cincinnati, a TD in the third OT. Texas and they need to take it to the 44 yard line to get the first. Walton sets in the pocket. Incomplete. Texas bench out on the field. Want to know if there is a flag for pass interference and there will be none. Meanwhile, over on the sideline, they are attending to Ricky Williams. Mark Schultes, the junior out of Sherman, to kick it away. Tiki Barber, the only man back. And he's got it at the 24, so there's a timeout. 9.49 left in the ballgame, all of Virginia. Just under 10 minutes left in our ball game. And on the sideline, Ricky Williams continuing to be attended to by the Texas trainers. And we'll show you after this play, it appears as though it's a knee injury. She got hit low and high. Tiki Barber. Robert Crenshaw hits him. Uh, now he is up and moving around, but on the replay, it didn't look very good, did it, Mike? No, it didn't. Rondé Barber came underneath him. You're going to see number 19 come in and hit him on the uh, right leg. It looks like maybe got it stuck inside there, his right leg. Ball came loose. Looks like he's okay. Spanky Stevens, the trainer, following on the sideline to make sure that he is all right. 25, Anthony Southern. And Southern tackled by Carter. And let's check in again with uh, Kellen Winslow. Kellen? Well, Ron, they're very concerned about Mr. Williams, rightfully so. They were checking his right knee, put an extra pad on there to talk into him now. He's trying to walk it off. Looks like he may go back in the ballgame. Well, the Phillies are breathing easier. Yeah, that's that's for sure. And it's 
Good to see him running on the sideline. That was the first carry, I believe, for the fullback tonight, Anthony Southern. Going long in and out of the hands of Westbrook, who had the cover on the play. Second uh, carry for the fullback tonight. It's a tailback offense here for Virginia. Fullback's going to block most of the time. Every now and then, you keep him happy with a carry. Lucky Gobble, the uh, running backs coach, consoling Ricky Williams on the sideline, and I'm sure that he, too, is excited to see that Williams is up and about. Sherman Stone only four passes this half, and he's 0 for the second half. Stopped at the 48, and Mike Tarico, a busy guy tonight. Certainly are, Ron. Uh, for the folks who are out of college football games today, maybe you didn't catch the story of the day. Troy Davis, four touchdowns with 378 yards rushing. Third best day by a major college running back. Darnell Autry and Northwestern's win earlier on ESPN over 100. And almost Zaraway of West Virginia, four out of five games over 100 yards. And the numbers on Tiki Barber tonight, 25 carries, 121 yards, and three touchdowns. The swing and pass out to Barber. Westbrook hit him. He lost the football, and then it is knocked out of bounds. So it'll be possession with Virginia. He just makes you miss. And let's go back to Kellen Winslow. Kellen? Ron, the whole evening I've been trying to figure out who Bryant Westbrook reminded me of by the way he moved out on the field, and it finally hit me. Lester Hayes, who's a Texas A&M alum who played with Oakland Raiders, L.A. Raiders, Anaheim Raiders for so many years. But Bryant Westbrook is a highly rated defensive back. Watch his play he makes, strips the ball. Lester Hayes Jr. Thomas Jones runs back into the short side of the field. 59, Kyle Richardson on his back. Also, Tyson King helped out in the stop. Under eight minutes to play. Virginia jumped out to a 21 then a 24 to nothing lead before Texas got on the scoreboard just before halftime. And Barber appears to be okay, so... Good to see that both tailbacks shaken tonight and are, are up and all right. George Wells said he'd like to have him carry the ball about 25 times a game. And that's exactly where he's at tonight, five re receptions. So he's had a busy evening. John. Casey Hampton, number 64. He's a true freshman out of Galveston Ball High School. Made the stick on him. Cedric Woodard, who is uh, a defensive tackle, defensive end, actually, who plays behind Gray Moser, was injured in practice this week and didn't make the trip. And Texas a little bit slim in that uh, defensive line category. Third down. Corral to Moser. Caught at the 13. Westbrook had the cover, but it was Owen who grabbed it for a 13-yard gain. Ron, he was a walk-on kicker here. He worked at the Golden Corral Steakhouse to earn his money to go to school here. Came out day, one day and ran a 4-6, and uh, plus he saw Garcia kick, and he figured he was never going to kick here, so <laughs> he went, uh, tried a different position. Now he's a wide receiver on scholarship. He's eating those steaks down there now. He's not working there anymore. It's away, B.O. Jones hurdles one tackler. Then Humphrey gets on his back. It will stop him after a short yardage uh, gain. You look at Virginia. Virginia, North Carolina, the team. Georgia Tech, who saw them the other night. They're a good football team still. Competing with Florida State, and of course, I'm sure Florida State sitting back uh, looking forward to the return of Virginia to their stadium after that game last year where they lost it here on Thursday night. Florida State clearly out ahead, but Virginia going to challenge in this Georgia Tech team. It's a young ball club, but they're very, very tough. Jones 
Jones again. Grabbed by Hampton, broke off that tackle, and then Robert Crenshaw finished him off. Under five minutes to play. Now next week we get to see the uh, Seminoles as we head down to Tallahassee. The Clemson Tigers in there to do battle with them. Get Clemson in there, watch them play Wake Forest a little bit today. They beat Wake Forest and uh, they'll have their hands full with that Florida State offense. But what's more impressive this year with Florida State's their defense. Bernard Wilson, uh, he's roaring up the field. Bo Ware, Wadsworth, I mean, those are three pretty big time defensive linemen. Jones hit in the backfield. Kyle Richardson hitting first, trying to take the ball away. And Mickey Andrews has got some folks to uh, start a squabble with. I like their chances when the season began to win this whole thing, and uh, nothing's changed. They played a very, very good North Carolina team today. It gave them a good fight, but uh, they were up to the task. So Garcia will come on and attempt the field goal. It's going to be 27 yards. Sherman to hold. He's got it. Shows his break in the action. 37 to 13 with 342 remaining. That reminds me at the end of the. Okay, 37 to 13. Virginia on top as you look at the Texas bench. Been difficult. We chronicled the, the, the first half for you just a while ago where. This Virginia team got three quick touchdowns from Tiki Barber. It's in the field goal. 24 to 3 is uh, how we stood at halftime. Texas came back, scored with uh, 93 seconds into the second half, and then had a couple of things happen that kind of derailed it as it looked as though they were gaining some momentum. And Virginia took it over. This one they try to keep from having a return. Pooch it out of bounds. So, George Wells not all happy with everything that's happening. He didn't like what his special teams just did. Kicked it out of bounds. And the Longhorns get it at the... 35-yard line with 342 remaining. Well, they sat for a year, and they looked to this ball game. And this is payback for this Virginia team. Mike, when this thing was sold out in May, that was a message right there mm -hmm. <laughs> that the students and the alumni were aiming for this one, pointing to it. Name and homecoming, you've got to have some confidence. Walton's pass intercepted by Taylor. Six. Texas turnover. Well, the PA announcer at his high school said, I told you so. He can play for you, George. Stephen Phelan with the interception. I think the key in all this is it's a great story because here's a guy who came here with a, as a walk-on and played two years, and George Wells said, frankly, I didn't think he could ever play here, but he just kept working, and all of a sudden he made some plays in practice and he cemented himself a position. Well, as you might expect, Brooks is going to come in so they can get him some reps. Number 11, a quarterback. He's a sophomore, Newport News, Virginia. And this is Jones, Thomas Jones, the freshman of Appalachia, Virginia. Kellen, let's go back down to you. Well, Ron, we're down here on the field with a very proud mother. And we're trying to get some video here on Tiki and his touchdowns and everything. But while we're waiting for that, let me ask you about his academics. I know you're very proud of that also. I am more proud of the academics of both Tiki and Ronde than, or just as proud as I am of their athletic capabilities. They've both always been very strong students. Tiki graduated high school with a 4.0, and he's carrying a B-plus average now. And 
It amazes me that in spite of all of the time they spend in the computer lab and in the classroom, that they find time to do this well on the athletic field. Well, it sounds like a good standard was set. I hear you graduated from, with your master's with a 4.0. Yeah, I did. <laughs> you know, you got to walk the talk and, and or walk that walk and talk that talk all at the same time. You can't very well say do what I say and not as I do because that will come back to haunt you. Oh, oh, does it bother you that Rondi does not get the exposure that Tiki does? Rondé's a very confident young man. I think if you spent yes, two or three minutes talking with him, you'd know that he's a very confident young man. And he knows that he's doing what he has to do, and he's doing the best that he can. And as long as he's okay with that, I'm okay with that. They're very close, and any honor that either one of them gets, um, they've always been very good about sharing it with the brother. Well, you've done a very fine job in raising them, and congratulations to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ron, back up to you. Okay, Kellen, thanks a million. She could write a book on uh, how to raise kids because she's got two pretty good ones, and she did. Uh, Kellen's right. She set the example for them. Yeah, she really did. <laughs> Graduated with that kind of average and her master's degree. As you see, the penalty being stepped off against Virginia. We have 211 left in this one. They're quite a story, but the twins, the barber twins, Ronde and Tiki. Tonight before this homecoming crowd, their senior season, Leaving a night that they not only will remember, but uh, all the folks that came and sat in the rain tonight will remember for a long time, too, Mike. Well, it's a happy homecoming here. All that's left now is a dance. And Rondi will probably, and Tiki will probably show up there also. Rondi said he's seven minutes older, right? Yes. Yeah. away at the five-yard line on a nice defensive play by number 18 Cody Danaher formerly a quarterback with Texas coming up next the residents in college football scoreboard the top stories today Troy Davis what a huge day for him Bino's top five and a wrap-up from South Bend Bino might have been the only guy that I know that picked Arizona State to beat Nebraska now uh, I listened to him on a radio show, and he picked it, so I know he did it. I, I know everybody else was going with Nebraska. Frank Rotella will punt this time rather than Will Bryce. He's standing back at the 44. And this one may not go five yards. Picked up by Texas. And the ball is going to be where the line of scrimmage was. Here's our prime time top ten round. We put Florida State number one. Florida two. You could put them any way you want to. Those two. Ohio State moves up to three. Penn State to four. Arizona State moves up to five. Michigan. Nebraska, I think, still has a shot for this national championship because a lot of teams are going to interchange and play each other and knock each other off. Tennessee and uh, or Miami 8, Tennessee 9, and then I put Kansas State in there. I think Kansas State deserves to be in the top 10 in the country. And this guy right here, I thought that the job that he did at Navy was all world. It's nothing compared to the job he's done here at this university. Yeah, he's done a nice job, Ron. I mean, he's brought in a nice staff, and again, he's got continuity in his coaching staff. He's got some good, solid coaches. Joe Kreback, who's a former head coach at Maryland. Rick Lance, who's been at Notre Dame. He's been at uh, Miami, Louisville, and a lot of good programs. So he's got some uh, veteran coaches. Clock is running at 1:12, and now 1:11. Walton gets his pass away, streak route, and he's got it complete out at the 40-yard line. Well, tonight's piece of players of the game are from Texas, Mike Adams, six receptions, 94 yards, and from Virginia, no upset here. Tiki Barber, 121 yards rushing, 52 receiving, three touchdowns. And as part of their continuing effort to further the development of amateur athletics, Visa, proud to donate $1,000 to each of these universities on behalf of these athletes. That was a 28-yard pass play. And the clock is stopped with 53 ticks left. Blocked at the line of scrimmage. And 
I believe Hellerick got a hand up. Yep, Hellerick got it. Tough chore for this Texas football team coming off that Notre Dame game and coming in here to this environment and uh, meeting a good football team like Virginia. We got the best of them tonight. Chris Butcher is the ball carrier. Oklahoma State is next in line for the Longhorns on October the 5th. And for this Virginia team, they have to travel to Atlanta to take on Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech team with uh, Joe Hamilton at quarterback. Pretty good running back in C.J. Williams. So a lot of football to be played yet in this ACC, but it looks like Florida State uh, still the kingpin in this league. That pass in and out of the hands of the receiver, and we got one we don't have on the depth is Courtney Epps. Sixteen seconds left. Coming up, the residents in college football scoreboard. Walton pumped it once, goes on top for the end zone, just a little too far. Brian White is the guy that he wanted, and the pump had taken care of the defensive back. Nine seconds left. So Virginia holds, and they only have to fall on the football one time, and this one is history. Ron Richard Walton really played well for Texas tonight in the backup did. quarterback role, and it'll be interesting to see. I'm sure, James uh, will be the starting quarterback in the next ball game, but uh, Richard Walton's going to push him. So the celebration has started on the near sideline for the Cavaliers, as they will remain undefeated on this season. Loose has been picked up by Texas, and that is the end of the ball game. So from Mike Gottfried and Kevin Winslow, Ron Franklin saying again our final score, Virginia 37, Texas 13. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Now let's join Mike Tirico for the residents in college football scoreboard. Guys, thank you. The Barbers of Seaville get it done.